Some people believe the Beta Cassius planet to have mystical healing powers. The Alcyons were believed to have destroyed the last of the Torellian ships. And Deanna Troy's father actually knew Steve Miller. I think he was the bass player. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh Rule with Sirach Lofton and Denise Crosby, triumphantly returning from the Star Trek cruise, by the way. We made yeah. it, we made oh, it yeah, from we the did. love boat. The love boat landed. And uh, my name is Ryan yeah. T. Huss. Today we're doing a review of Star Trek The Next Generation, Season 1, Episode 10, Haven, story by Tracy Torme and Lan Okun, teleplay by Tracy Torme, directed by Richard Compton. Uh, this was November 28th, 1987. And... Big thanks to Grandpa One, a.k.a. Tim Baum, for sponsoring this entire season. What is up? How are you doing? Actually, first things first, as a big Star Trek fan, Denise, I just want to ask you, just to get this whole thing started, this is the first episode of Luoxana Troy. Can you tell us, you obviously met Major Roddenberry. What was she like? Oh my God. Well, she came in with a force of like a force of nature, <laughs> embodying this character and, you know, just never, never let up. Um, she was just had such a presence, you know, and um, I just thought it was really clever that she was cast in this role. I thought it was um uh, you know uh, definitely stunt casting but but yeah. worked tremendously i had uh i had previously met majel completely um apart from star trek i was doing a play in la a very very popular play called tamara and um we were doing eight shows a week and in between the Sunday matinee and the Sunday evening performance, a bunch of us would go over to the Cock and Bull restaurant on Sunset Boulevard, and we'd have oysters in between um, shows, sort of our treat and a little boost. And Majel, every Sunday evening, would sit at the bar by herself and have oysters. Mm. And so we began to know this woman, get to know this local, you know, who would was there at the same time. And she opened up to us that she was um, her her husband was Gene Roddenberry. He had created Star Trek. And we went, oh, yeah, of course. And so about a year later, I get cast as Tasha Yar and, um, you know, get to know her through this and reminded her of our meetings at the Cock and Bull on Sunday evenings. <laughs> that's so cool wow. i had no idea i know small little world i'm mm -hmm. telling you that's a small world um i will say that Majel has been always very sweet when i've been around her she was very kind very lovely um and always um eager to do the work and be there that from what i understood she i didn't feel like a reluctancy or this was something that she was bothered by i felt like this is what she wanted to do she wanted to be in these scenes she wanted to be in these episodes yeah. and she approached it with that kind of passion and, and fervor yeah but but what i noticed about this episode specifically i was reminded of lucille ball hmm. and there are comparisons to me to how Majo plays this character and Lucille Ball, this kind of, you know, pushy, um, you know, I'm going to do things my way. And I think there's also an irony in the true story of her, her life, you know, also being married to Gene Roddenberry and Lucille Ball being married to uh, Desi, who was a, producer and she was always trying to get in his acts and so mm -hmm. i feel like i feel a parallel to majel trying to get in these acts and i'm not saying that that's why it happened but it, there is a similarity there in when i look at it from this kind of um hindsight perspective right 
Right. Well, and she does play it with that, you know, screwball comedy yes. sort of energy. You know, she's just so cute. camping it up and, mm-hmm. and you know, working, working the the sexual angle, the comedic uh, angle. And, you know, there's there's never really a moment of of sort of depth or straight man about it at all you know it's just at you know high up here the whole level of the performance which Mm -hmm. lucy of course was always at as well right so there's there are similarities in the performance that she's that that kind of reminds you of a lucille ball you know and the uh follies and the, the the comedy there that she she brings to the table as well um but I also will say, from my perspective, I don't, I didn't know uh, her character's backstory. Yeah. And when I met her, she was the one flirting with Odo, and mm. that was that's pretty much all I knew about her going into this episode. And so when I'm watching this, and I realize, oh, that's Counselor Troy's mother, <laughs> and that like that. <laughs> Like, so that wasn't how, clear with, with I don't know how I did not oh. put that together. I, ah. I get the last Oh wow, name, I didn't realize but, that. But this is the first time I'm understanding that because they didn't make that distinction on Deep Space Nine, from what I understand watching it. They didn't um And they don't act similarly. Say that. Like she doesn't act like Troy at all. Right. In fact, uh if I remember correctly, Marina at uh convention several years ago once you know mentioned and pointed out the fact that she worked on her accent she worked on creating this character of deanna troy with with an accent that over enunciates a bit and sounds a little british right and then her mom comes along he's just like oh hey what's up everybody hey uh, let's uh, yeah. do crazy stuff and she's like what the heck why did i create this whole and then she's like and then i was well, stuck for seven years with this weird accent <laughs> except except um Luxana does re- comment on her accent mm-hmm. in this episode says you know when i hear you speak it reminds me of your father so what what i get right there is oh so even though her her father's human, um, which I had forgotten mm-hmm. that Deanna was half human, um, that uh, oh he must that that's how he spoke. So so it kind of explains right. it explains this accent in some way. Very right. Very yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. Um, I was surprised. It's like oh, so that's where it comes from, and. The, once those things started to click, I actually uh, I realized, oh, this is the this was the first appearance of Major Roddenberry in, in the show, right? As yes. Loxana Troy, she played a couple characters in the original series. First of which, I believe, yeah. was number one, uh, the one that's played by Rebecca Romaine right now in uh, in Captain Pike. What's it called? Strange New Worlds, um, right. and then also Nurse Chapel. I think it was. These guys are going to skewer me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it was Nurse right. Chapel and and Janice Rand was Grace Lee Whitney, I think. Um, but yeah, this is the introduction of that character. And you know, it's got to be just Gene Roddenberry saying, all right, how do we get her back into this show? And he clearly wrote a character based on his wife uh, because she obviously was the perfect actress to play this character you know it felt like it was mm-hmm. kind of molded around her is what it seems like having never met her but actually denise you met her was that her personality kind of friendly and and making jokes and being very comfortable with everybody yes i mean for the most part you know this was this was you know this was major on steroids a little bit i mean she wasn't you know that mm-hmm. kind of anti mamish in everybody's <laughs> in everybody's stuff and everybody's face but yeah she was very she was she was present and available and warm and um you know always engaging and big personalities very tall very tall so very very present and um she yeah she wasn't she certainly wasn't a wallflower by any means you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, 
uh, she was a socialite too. She liked to host parties at her house, and she oh, sent invitations. Yeah, I remember getting invitations on a you know regular basis for a Halloween or a Christmas party that she would throw. And um, I was unable yeah. to make it, but I was very uh, kind of her to invite me and to you know include me. So she was always trying to um, reach out to people and, and be a socialite and. Like uh, Denise was saying, I, I don't remember seeing her huddled in the corner, like not talking to people. She, <laughs> no, she was, she was always very social, talking. very, yes. very social. They had, they were members of a country club, you know, they would go and, you know, have cocktails and dinners and play golf and, and, you know, very, very, very much out and about. Oh, well, that's yeah. so cool. That's so great. Yeah. There's so many people out there that are huge fans of hers that never got to meet her. So I know they're going to be really soaking this up. Um, I mean, there are some people that have flatly said she is their favorite character in all of Star Trek ever. Wow. So, Luoxana? Luoxana? Yeah. So okay. clearly that kind of personality type, you know, the Lucille Ball personality type, the Luoxana Troy really resonates with a lot of people, uh, one of which is actually our associate producer, Dr. Anne-Marie Siegel. And I think she'll be in the free-for-all later so she can explain why. Uh, but that was really cool. I was happy to see her so early on in this series because as a fan and not having seen any of this stuff for like 20 years myself, um, I forget how early on she was introduced. I was like, wow, she was in the 10th episode? Uh, yeah. we're barely getting to know everybody else. And, and then we had, by the way, this was Armin Shimmerman, his actual, no. how he mentioned, yeah, this was his acting debut yeah. in Star Trek. Remember how he said the first thing that he did for Star Trek was to be the face in the box. And then after that, they shot, uh, the last outpost. So even yeah, though this was, this was episode 10 and he appears first wow. in episode four, this was shot first. This was his first Star Trek role. Oh God! The one no, only. I see it. Right, oh, and yeah, he changed his voice. Him. You couldn't recognize his <laughs> yeah. voice either. No, I knew it was Armin. I saw, I saw it because I just saw, I just finished seeing him, so I recognized the face. Oh, wow, right really? Away. I did yeah. not. I, I was did like, not. Armin is the box. <laughs> <laughs> he even like dis disguised his voice in a way. Like I, I, I yeah. knew it was him, and I was still like, wow, that doesn't sound like him at all. Yeah. Um, wow. I forgot it that. Was, it, yeah. Really. Yeah. It, it was amazing. Uh, uh, special effects for that box transformation right there. It was <laughs> high end. But I, I thought it was funny. <laughs> I think he's called it high end. <laughs> it was a high end uh, transformation. Uh, but I did in, enjoy the, um, the whole jewels coming out of it. And even at the end, when they said, you can keep the chest, I'm like, that would, no. that would be good. Like, you want me to keep no. that? Don't leave it in the bathroom, man. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's... There, there that's, were some serious uh, jewels in there. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking, no, I do not want to keep the chest that talks to me like that. That's... No, I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you don't want to be caught talking to a chest. People get mad at that. Um, <laughs> with good reason. Uh, one other person I wanted to point out is, uh, I believe his last name is pronounced Stroiken, Carol oh. Stroiken, Mr. Home. He was mm -hmm. the tall, uh, I think Dutch actor. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. Stroiken seems Dutch. And, mm -hmm. um, we did hear him speak once, but I always thought he was like the predecessor, Sirach, to my hard do. Remember uh, the tall, kind of wrinkly face guy that would come with Grand Negus Sec? He always had his mm -hmm. super tall alien manservant mm -hmm. like this guy was. And I was like, I always wished those two guys had met each other because they were both seven foot tall alien characters that didn't speak, but they were just kind of like a, a servant yeah. or a guardian or assistant mm -hmm. or something to somebody, you know, royal. Um I don't know if you made that connection, but it was good to see him. I always liked him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can we can set up the bout between the two of them. It would be <laughs> a great match to see who's the the stronger, taller servant. Um, <laughs> the thing that was funny to me about that was the whole 
Captain Picard carrying the bags, tro- you know, the kind of joke that we're trying to play with that. Mm-hmm. And to see him struggling with that uh, briefcase or the suitcase. And mm-hmm. then to see the other guy just pick it up so easily. Uh, you know, uh, it was a nice little moment there. It was showing that he was, you know, concerned and, and wanted to show uh, gratitude to uh, yeah. Council Troy's mother. And then mother. when he found out that it was Holmes' job, he's like, oh, please yeah. don't let me keep you from doing your duty. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Like, get out of this. <laughs> but actually, uh, Denise, so you, I don't know if you met uh, Carol. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like you did have one or two scenes with him. Was he just yeah. uh, super quiet? Yes, very, very polite, very, um, you know, so striking in his appearance. I mean, I have seen him and, you know, do other things um, over the years. I I, I had. Lurch. I think he played Lurch in one of the well, Adams that's families. That's what I was just going to say. Yeah. I mean, he re- he is reminding me of Lurch. Yeah. So, yes, that's probably why. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the whole, the whole thing was, was very colorful. That whole sequence shooting that party, you know, they had the plates of the weirdest food and, and, and they, they were trying to put together and just all these colorful outfits, everybody's, you know, wearing and, and how about my hairdo? My God, it looks like I stuck my mm-hmm. finger in an electrical shop. You were dry, You drove to work in a convertible that day. Oh, I totally. I mean, I, I, <laughs> you know, like very 80s. God, you know, I should be like with the Go-Go's at the, you know, on stage or something. <laughs> um, it was, I went, oh my God, you know, it was just out there, um, mm. you know, but. It, but in the 80s, it, they loved it. They're like, oh my, actually. I was going to mention this earlier, but uh, Deanna Troy's hair in the in the later half of the episode was actually really good. Like, I don't notice. I'm not good with hair. Yeah. I'm the worst at that. I just put a hat on so I don't have to do anything with my hair. But like, I was like, damn, Deanna Troy's hair is fire right now when it was all up and in this long ponytail. Yeah, thing. yeah. It looked it really looked good. Really, it, yeah, they were trying, you know, obviously I looked at all of our party hairdos, you know. Gates had something going on. I didn't, you know, be yeah, wrapped like, around kind of weird roll thing going. And I look like a, you know, an electrified <laughs> poodle. And, and, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and I mean, we're all sort of got our fancy party hair on, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I was, I noticed the hair too. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that the, I, I was looking at Gates' hair because I guess you said it was rolled in the back because it was short and it yeah. looked really short. And then the yeah, next she had was it. really long. But okay. you know, I'm noticing now, and and again, this is this is coming back to me. Um, there was a there was a lot of except for me. I mean, I had just, you know, that cut was 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 my hair, you know, that that was that was the yar haircut. But the girls were really trying to find this their hair in this in this sequencing of shows. You if you watch now. Gates has different hair each episode at this mm-hmm. point. Oh, know? yeah. I didn't notice that. And it's thicker. It's, it's, sometimes it's a wig. Sometimes it's not a wig. It's like they're, they're trying to find who they are in this, in this period right now. Mm. I can see that. Yeah, mm-hmm. when I first saw uh, Cr- Beverly Crusher's hair, when it was changed, my first thought was, whoa, did they cut her hair? Did I not notice? Yeah, that's what I, I my, thought. I, I was just like, did I seriously not notice that they cut her hair this episode? But then I saw that it was just kind of like rolled up into like a cinnamon bun in the back or something like that. Yeah, but, something going on there. But but even when her hair's down, when she's in like the ready room, mm-hmm. it that it's darker. It's a, it's a, I believe it's a wig at this point. And, you know, it's a whole whole thing that everybody's trying. But I remember I remember during the series that it, it there was there was hair struggles going on. Do I do, do I do that? It's like, what what is going on here with the hair? We can't quite lock into something and they're trying different things. Lock in the locks. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to just uh, switch pace on the uh, to- topic a little bit. Mm-hmm. There it is. <laughs> there it is. There um, it is. 
But, you know, the storyline between uh, Jonathan Frakes, between number one and Counselor Troy, it seems like, and they haven't given us enough backstory for the amount of front story that I see in this episode. And so I know that there's something there. They mentioned that in the pilot. There was that moment when they met each other. There was the, but they never showed them since then flirting with each other that much or even dating um, yeah. or, or having a, in like a romantic in-depth conversations. Um, you know, you would think that they would expand on that a little bit more. It's kind of in the gray area at this point. And so when I see the jealousy that freaks, I mean, <laughs> that he has in this episode, I'm like, whoa. Um, You're like, well, you never did anything about it, dude. So yeah. like, hey. <laughs> What are <laughs> you mad about? <laughs> You'd be mad right. at yourself. Kind of. <laughs> it has, it's not yeah. earned. It's not warranted at this point. It's, it's, you know, we're just leaping into, you know, a huge um, uh, assumption here. That, you know, there's these deep, deep um, passion and love and Imzadi and beloved. and But we don't see any of it. None of yeah. it has been there. Has there been an example of? We only got a hint of it, if I remember, uh, in the first episode when they kind of meet each other and they have this thing. But I don't Ooh. think from episode one to episode 10, there were any other hints that I can remember. There was the introduction. And then they there left it alone, and then looks. there was Riker throwing a little tantrum in this episode. <laughs> yeah, there were a couple yeah. of looks they've exchanged throughout the time. They've yeah, given maybe. each other looks, little light looks, nothing verbal. And the thing about it is that as a counselor who has this ability to read minds, you would think that that would exactly be the difficult conversation that she would call out. She would say, you're avoiding talking to me about this because of this and that's exactly how the conversation would start because you know obviously she knows what the deal is right can you imagine if yeah. your significant other can read your mind all the time oh god that there'd would... be no significant other <laughs> yeah I, we there wouldn't, wouldn't last be such a, week. a thing as you wouldn't last <laughs> a week I would have way. been busted so many times it wouldn't have even been funny. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you said you like the green shirt. I do. Right. <laughs> Don't call me a jerk. Yeah. You know? yeah. I didn't. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. Oh, do yeah, I look fat in this? Uh, yeah. Nope. Oh, God. Um, oh, you think she's prettier than me, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It would just never stop. Yeah, It would never like stop. It no, would be an I endless confrontation. But you would think that would be the that would be the joke running between yeah. the two of them. I think that what we're talking about could have been explored and it could always be, oh, you're looking at her. Oh, what is this? Oh, this is on your mind. Oh, you, you know, you want to. Whatever it is, she could always be using that against the um, against character. Even little subtle things. Like imagine if just something happens, right? And, and Riker just kind of looks at, at, at Troy and she just kind of goes, I know, Will. Or just like a little thing there where she, there's like that acknowledgement of that connection, you know? Yeah, or even mm -hmm. in this episode, there was room for the writers to when they were alone having this conversation and she says, you know, I know your your number one, you know, desire in life is to be a captain of a starship. And he says, well, there's other things. I mean, right then and there is the opening for the conversation of I know, I know, Will, that you you have you you have feelings. Feelings. And yes. you know, like they, like it, they get into it right talk then. Talk about there. it. it. They don't it talk about in it. this awkward space. Yeah. By them not talking about it, it makes it worse. Yeah. And and by her being a counselor, that's exactly her skill set. Literally right. talking about it. Well, then, and how about when when Wyatt shows up on the moonscape, and there the mm -hmm. two of them are together, barges in. I called yeah. it barging in, by the way. Maybe. Yeah. That it made me knock. really uncomfortable. Like, yeah. what's going on? Oh, oh, well, wait a minute. You're, you're the, you're, I mean, she's clearly said she's felt somebody, something for somebody on this ship. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And it's like nothing is ever like said. You know, He's like too bad, is... buddy. Too bad, buddy. Kick rocks. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. and the Riker's like, well, I guess, I guess I'll show myself out. And she's like, please do, Will. Yeah. Please do. Really <laughs> awkward. That that just felt like this is not. No, this is not what should be happening right now. Well, speaking of awkward, here's an awkward transition. Uh, we got to take a quick <laughs> break, everybody. Uh, and we'll talk more about this episode on the other side. This is Tasha Yar with the regular hair. Uh, we'll be right back on the seventh rule. <laughs> 